We had a fatal five-way face-off in the main event, and this segment here, I know this is the main event of the show, it's probably going to close the show, but these fans were absolutely, positively dead. Dead, dead for this segment. You know what? You know what? They have made Cross, they're so protective of Cross that they made everybody look bad except for Adam Cole. In this match that they didn't and this is this is the opposite this is the opposite of what they did in the segment before the segment before you had this dominant champion and they gave you the idea that you know what she can be laid out and killed and granted at the end you know he was laid out by Cole but he beat everybody up over and over and then they all attack him at once and he's still throwing them all around it's like those guys they made those challengers look so bad and and none of them are strong challengers, and they're all smaller than him, too. The segment opens with Regal and Cross yelling at each other, and then all of a sudden out comes Kyle O'Reilly, and he tries to cut a promo on Cross, and the fans are dead silent. Johnny Gargano comes out, and he cuts a promo, and the crowd is dead silent. Yeah, because you know why? Because because none of, they don't believe that any of these guys can beat Cross because Cross has been booked so strong. Pete Dunn comes out, dead silence. Finally, Adam well, Cole well, appears well, on the big screen. Well, Pete Dunn is a weak promo. I mean, that's then that's a cross he's going to have to, if he wants to make it, he's going to have to improve this promo. So he's a absolutely fantastic worker, but um, when he cuts a promo, it's like he's just he just does not he, he's re, he's memorizing and delivering words, and he's not saying them with any conviction. And he's going to have to figure that out because um, I hate to see a guy with that talent because it's like Pete Dunn is literally a guy who cannot have a bad wrestling match. And that's a tremendous talent to have. But, um, you know, unless you're going to have somebody talk for him, which you can and you probably should, um, it's going to hinder him. So, like I said, you really probably should have him in a group where somebody talks for him, like Pat McAfee. You had a guy, and they got rid of him. They made him a SmackDown announcer. Yeah. So, Adam Cole appears on the big screen, and he's doing his promo, and then O'Reilly says, Ah, this bitch can't even be here tonight in person. So, he gets in the ring to challenge Karrion Cross, and Karrion Cross beats his ass, and he beats Pete Dunne's ass. And he beats Johnny Gargano's ass. And he lays all of these dudes out that nobody thinks have any chance of winning. And then all of a sudden you see this foot, and it's Adam Cole. And Adam Cole has super kicked him from behind, and he hits him with the last shot. And I mean, the, I have never seen a main event angle for a big show that the crowd has been so dead for. And it's like... Don't they have the same button where you can at least pipe in some cheers or something like that? They didn't even bother. Yeah, they it do was have that button. silence as these guys were brawling. Caring Cross laying out this dude silence. He's laying out this guy silence. Adam Cole hits his move. I think there was a minor pop for that, and then he hits the uh, the knee. You know, you don't want. But the my is, God, this segment. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the problems is they were brawling throughout the whole show, so you've already seen him. And number two. They had just seen Ember Moon lay out Raquel Gonzalez, so you had to match that, and they didn't match that. You know, it was just, it was the opposite. They were just watching the baby faces getting thrown around, and it's like, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, they just, I don't know what, what like, Kyle O'Reilly is clearly a baby face, and any baby face treated like that is just, it's, it's like, it's fucked for them. Like, if you're a heel, you can get away with it because, you know, the, the dynamic of being a heel is different. Like, for Gargano, it doesn't kill Gargano, you know. He can still be smart-ass Gargano. And I, Why is this I don't match even... not Adam Cole and Kieran Cross? It'd be better. I mean, that's the only two guys they've given any credibility to in this entire it'd be, thing. It'd be, it'd be, I mean, okay, I take that back. It would be better for the, for the build to have just been those two guys because those two guys are where all the heat is and the other guys are just like in the in the thing perhaps the reason is can be a couple things number one maybe they want to take the title from carrying cross and they need somebody to beat and ain't going to be carrying cross it could be that or they don't um they don't have super confidence in carrying cross so they have all these freaking super workers buzzing around. They're going to have an incredible match because, like I said, Pete Dunne can't have a bad match. I don't know if Kyle Riley can have a bad match. Um, 
and you know Johnny Gargano's freaking Mr. Takeover he always has great matches so it's like Karrion Cross is going to be in like you know one of the great great in this great 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 match so in the end whatever weakness he has you don't see, you're not going to see him because he's going to be in this fantastic match so that's probably part of it but as a promotion yeah it should have been a singles match with Adam Cole because these other guys are are essentially just taking up space and in the way other than the fact that on Sunday they're going to be the keys in making the match great but for the promotion yes it, it it dilutes the promotion it makes the match cheap because the champion doesn't have to lose to lose a title but maybe that's the idea of why they're doing it um but certainly the idea is is that those guys are gonna you know make the match better and and in the ring they will so that show's coming up this sunday and as we talked about a couple of days ago yes they have changed the start time for these pay-per-views with no warning it is going to be at uh, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. So I guess the days of it's 7 better. Eastern, 4 Pacific are over. Yeah. I think it's better. Um, well, it's definitely I, better, especially if they're only three-hour shows from now on. Yeah. Well, this will probably be less than three hours. You know, it's probably like two and a half. And you um, don't have to tell these these folks at the uh, earnings calls that you've got 35,000 hours of content for the month of June. Doesn't matter have to anymore. put on shows. Doesn't matter so let's anymore. let make them shorter now. It doesn't matter anymore because it's like you're not get, you're not they don't even get those stats anyway. It's, it's that's all Peacock. That's all for Peacock. That not even their thing. They already guaranteed the money. So yeah, you don't have to do that and like you know whatever. You don't have to do long shows now. Thank God. Um, but yeah, there you go. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.